to Nahl of the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares and we send down the book Yani the Quran on thee, O Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, that this book might explain all things. Did you hear that? That this book might explain all things. And therefore that this book might explain the strange economy around the world today. In which wealth no longer circulates through the economy in which the rich are now permanently rich forever and ever and ever and the poor are now imprisoned in permanent poverty forever and ever and ever this book will explain it this book will explain that strange economy in which the rich grow ever richer and the masses around the world are now being imprisoned in a new slavery. This book will explain it. And in this book there is guidance. How do we respond to that strange world out there? That explanation and that guidance have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as rahmah. And for those who have the good sense and the wisdom to go search for it through the hours of the night with tears in their eyes and tears in their heart. And when they find it, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with it. They accept it and they embrace it and they apply it regardless of the price they have to pay. Bushra lahum, good news and glad tidings for such people. They will understand what others cannot, not even with a PhD from the London School of Economics. They will understand what others cannot. And they will succeed when others will not. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify Him this night. And we beseech Him most humbly for his guidance and for his blessings and for his protection most of all his protection for not all who come are friends we beseech him for his guidance and his blessings and his protection as we attempt to address and to explain the subject Islam and money Islam and the international monetary system and we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers. And in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to the Prophet والسلام, with a basket of dates or a saw of dates and offered some dates to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam He looked at the dates and he said Bilal these are very fine quality dates where did you get them? Bilal radiallahu ta'ala who replied and said O Messenger of Allah I had two baskets of inferior quality dates or two sa'as and I exchanged them for this one basket of superior quality dates or one sa'a of superior quality dates. That's how I got them. Bilal said the Prophet that was the essence of riba. Now this is terrible, because if drinking whiskey is bad, riba is worse than that. If committing zina with your next door neighbor's wife is bad, riba is worse than that. You'll excuse me if I raise my voice because I want to shake the heart sometime.
This is the essence of riba. <laughs> riba, we know, is lending and borrowing money on interest. When money is lent on interest, Allah declares, that is not business. He says, Ahallallahu al-bay'ah wa harram al-riba. Allah has made business halal and he has made riba haram. So now to understand why riba is haram, we have to find out, well, in what way are they different? Business and riba. The last man in the world to ask that question is a banker. Eh? <laughs> the difference between riba and business, of course, you understand it. That it is in the essence of a business transaction that you must embrace risk. You can either make a profit or suffer a loss. That's business. In riba, you don't have any risk. You either eliminate it or you immunize yourself from it by minimizing it. So you can only make a profit regardless of the size of the profit, no loss. Well, what's the harm in that? The harm is that when you eliminate risk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now faced with a people who have shut the door. He told them, don't shut this door. If you shut this door, I will not open it. In Allah, la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Don't shut this door. Because if you shut it, I'm not going to open it. Which door? The door to risk. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can now cause some to suffer loss and others to get a gain. So he can distribute wealth and he can redistribute wealth so that wealth will circulate through the economy. But now when that door is shut, when an economy is based on riba, lending and borrowing on interest, the rich will now remain permanently rich and the poor will remain permanently poor. If you still not understood, this book will help you. It took me four years to write it, The Prohibition of Riba in the Quran and Sunnah. And this one will help you to muster up the courage to read the bigger one. The Importance of the Prohibition of Riba in Islam. But there is another form of riba. If you meet a man coming to the market to sell his goods, and you buy his goods from him before he could enter into the market. And when he entered into the market, he finds out that he could have gotten a better price in the market. That's riba. Why? You exploited his ignorance of the market price to get a profit or a gain greater than that to which you were entitled. Hmm? The Americans describe this with a very pretty phrase. They say, you ripped him off. <laughs> That's riba. Namely, a transaction based on deception through which you get a profit or a gain or an advantage to which you are not justly entitled. Riba. Tonight, we're going to be spending some time on this second kind of riba. So the Prophet said, Bilal, this is the essence of riba. What you should have done, what you should have done, is to sell the two baskets. Don't look at me, don't look at him. Sell the two baskets of inferior quality dates. And take that money and buy the one basket of superior quality dates. And so they had equal value. Equal value. And so it was haram to exchange two baskets of dates for one. It was riba.
But uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu exchanged four camels for one. And that was not haram. Why was this haram and that not haram? And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu exchanged 20 camels for one. These 20 may have been baby camels. And this one may have been a pregnant camel. And there was not haram. So the question we ask tonight is, why was it haram to exchange two baskets of dates for one? And there was riba. But it was not haram to exchange four camels for one or twenty camels for one. That's a good question, isn't it? You're lucky I don't have the time to question you tonight. To answer that question, we must go to another hadith. And you've all heard this hadith before, all of you. It is in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam is describing a transaction in which there is an exchange of gold for gold or silver for silver or wheat for wheat or barley for barley or dates for dates this is the one, dates for dates or salt for salt and he is declaring once it is like for like it must be equal for equal two baskets on this side you must have two baskets on this side if not it is riba why is it riba? remind me to answer that question if I forget why would it be riba? if I exchange two baskets of dates for one why? before we answer that question and also remind me because I forget you know remind me to answer the question why is the four camels for one not riba? okay when we look at this hadith there are six items mentioned two of them are precious metals gold and silver and the other four may be described as commodities what is there which is common to all six of them there are two things which are common to all six of them the first is this that all six were used as money in the market in Medina if there was a shortage of gold and silver coins they would use dates as money in Medina hmm? the second thing which is common to all six which the Prime Minister of Malaysia has only now understood when the sun is already setting huh? is that in all six <laughs> in, all, in all six the value of the money is in the money in other words in all six the money had intrinsic value I heard with my own ears the Prime Minister of Malaysia say a few years ago of course he's going to be embarrassed now to re be reminded of it he said, money has no intrinsic value. Now, he's backpedaling. <laughs> because now, he's beginning to learn a little thing from us. who are teaching this subject for years now. And so the two things which are common are, number one, all six were used as money. And number two, in every case, the money had intrinsic value. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Sunnah money. You never heard of it before. You heard about the Sunnah, the bed. You heard about Sunnah, Salat, 
But you never heard about sunnah money before. First time. What is sunnah money? Sunnah money is either precious metals or commodities. And sunnah money is money which has intrinsic value. It is sunnah. And we've abandoned it today. This is riba.